few years ago if someone told me that today i'm going to be hosting a podcast doing a job where you are meeting hundreds of people each day interacting with them every day new set of people new set of colleague and making friends so quickly traveling solo etc honestly i wouldn't have believed them hello and welcome back to limitless horizons podcast this is tanishtha your host welcome you on today's episode on understanding your introverted self so before we begin our episode the key point or the take away from the episode are the characteristics you hold as an introvert accepting those characteristics and focusing on self growth misconceptions and building social confidence i have always been an introverted person in my entire life even in my school during the pta meetings or parent teacher meetings apart from academics my only complaint i ever received was i am too silent never used to speak not taking that effort in performing extra or even if i know the answer i never used to speak up if i was interested in doing something i was never vocal enough or quick enough to express and i used to blow up any chances i ever had i had a very limited group of people and my friends i always had an issue staying connected and i always enjoyed my time alone and to be honest i still do sometimes i love my time alone but if you look into the more technical answer introvert and extrovert are the two most contrasting personalities when you hear the word introvert you might think of someone who's shy or quiet and prefers to be alone while that may be true for some introverts there's much more to this personality type introverts prefer solitude and they draw energy by being alone while on the other hand an extrovert thrives on social interaction and seek external encouragement or stimulation on one hand we have introverts like me who prefers participating in less interactive or social activities and enjoy staying indoors or prefer reading writing meditating basically which have less or absolute or no interaction into the social world a very limited group of friends they value their quality time so if you see introverts have or they are more focused on a single activity a situation and think before they speak you know they are the most appropriate people to have deep and meaningful conversation because they will listen to you with their more sincerity and their focus will be on you and listening to you because they tend to stay connected in the internal world and they try to reflect their own feelings and emotions and thoughts so they understand your feelings and emotions because they are well aware of the process of re- self reflection and they want you to self reflect honestly speaking from my experience they are the most sorted people when making decisions because they are very conscious decision makers because they always take their time to think twice or thrice and then re- react to the situation accordingly but if i talk about the characteristics everyone has some characteristics which defines their personality so here we're going to look at some qualities or the characteristics of an introvert the first and the foremost thing which is quite evident for an introvert is that they keep to themselves their leisure time won't be hopping from one place to another or socializing but reading writing maybe listening to music putting their headphones on uh maybe scrolling or watching videos basically they try to avoid the crowd or the social awkwardness some people misunderstand it with ego but very few know that they function like this they draw their energy by doing such activities they have adapted to be like this with this point actually this point leads me to my next this point leads me to my next when i say draw energy what do we understand you know some activities in our daily life which make us feel motivated or energized to perform our best like morning yoga meditation workout interacting with people learning new skills etc whatever your energy booster can be so for introverts they feel drained interacting with people or putting up with events or functions they avoid crowds because by end of it they will lose all their energy socializing so they choose to spend the time doing what they enjoy the most and from which they draw more energy from they are extremely awkward when it comes to being a part of a larger group they are not people pleasers so you will not find them grouping they keep to themselves and avoid grouping the third point is introverts are the ones who talk less but they are the active listeners and analytical thinkers by analytical thinker what i mean is 
they have the ability to identify and define problems and develop workable solutions to those problems. They are highly logical and can see patterns. They will see the causes or effects in complex situation. They will not initiate any conversations with you. But when it comes to talking, they find themselves lost and under confidence, but they are the most knowledgeable person. As I already mentioned, they keep themselves engaged by doing learning something or the other. But when you talk to them, they will listen to you with their utmost attention and use their thoughts to analyze what you do and help you yourself reflect on the things. Next point is, have you ever asked any introvert how they feel? What reply did you receive? I am good, thanks. But have you ever wondered if they might have an emotion which is bothering them? But they will never show that. Not just by the behavior, even the expressions are neutral. You will never ever understand if they are going through something. They will, they will have or maybe absolutely no expressive when it comes to their emotional well-being or feelings. They very well know how to hide any emotional changes they might be going through. They're extremely private people. Also with this, a study shows that introverts are the ones who are at high risk of falling into depression because they do not share their part of problems with you. They will only tell you things which they want you to know about them. But apart from that, it is actually impossible to know the insiders of their life. They keep their life extremely private. They have this invisible wall which is so strong that nobody can get past it. It is those few people in her surrounding who have the access. They won't share their part of their life. But when they do, they are the most vulnerable and at the same time, the most powerful human beings. My next point is introverts are the most creative people because they learn from observing things. They do not have their attention at several other things, but what they feel is going to be beneficial for them. They observe, learn and recreate. So when they work in a group project, they are the ones who pay attention to the smaller details Analyze with their critical thinking, they plan the projects step by step and their entire focus is at work till it completes and making the entire project perfect. They are actually the brain behind the project and they like to stay in the background. They just don't like to be the center of attention. They avoid attracting the focus. So they do all the needful or the hard work research everything but will not like to be highlighted and the most distinguished introverted personality is as we know they prefer their alone time or me time whatever you want to call it they like to travel a solo and b to more historical places or nature where there is a story behind they will not visit places just for the hang of it or it is trending or everybody went so they have to go no they do not have this mindset. So they travel to whichever place they find is going to have a rich history or culture and like to experience nature. The ambience to learn more and reflect more. Their focus in the, is on that. So they enjoy their solo time during their travel. Just once, try to go out with your introverted friend to a place where they suggest and you will notice even you will gain interest in visiting those places. The kind of hype they will bring is naturally going to boost your energy to learn more, see more, observe more. Look, this characteristics does not limit to what I just said. But as we know, every human is different. Their personality is different and they function differently. So the characteristics cannot be limiting. But these are the few which is very general or the basic for the average introverted personality, which I've already discussed. This leads me to chapter number two. You know, you cannot grow until you accept your natural behavior or personality and understand where it is coming from. It is easier to say, I know I'm this or that I'm, but saying and accepting are both very different things. When I was in my teens, I knew people were constantly commenting that I'm shy, I'm quiet, I'm not vocal enough or never taking stands or never socializing, etc, etc. Every time I was with people, I knew they were expecting and waiting for me to speak. And when I did, there would be sarcastic comments, remarks. Oh, she has a voice. Oh, she can speak. Even remarks like, oh, she's still here. I never knew how to react back then. But those comments made me feel extremely insecure about myself. And I started distancing from others. I became very 
very conscious around people. But even after knowing those things, I never accepted those traits, which people around me saw way before than I could realize. But when I understood that by not accepting those traits, I was stuck at one place. I was losing on people and friends. Initially, I blamed them for being ridiculous and not accepting the way I was. But how would they? I was not even ready to accept who I was. So how did I even expect that they would? But when I started accepting those things, then I was on the journey towards growth and self-love. I was not trying to change myself from being an introvert to extrovert. I was trying to be open to experiences of life, of those daily challenges and faced my fears. Most importantly, I took myself out that comfortable place I have always been into. There was a time when I started playing safe. I never attended any group activity. I avoided most social gatherings. I was completely comfortable where I was and how I was. Instead of hiding your introversion, why not accept it and make it a part of who you are? If you accept yourself as an introvert, then you can play to your strengths. We need to let people know it is not a diagnosis of a disease, but a broader aspect of your personality. It is a not impairment, but a way of being just like any other fashion choices. To be able to approach things in a more gentle fashion takes a certain skill set. Learn to like that side of you and nurture your natural traits. Look, it is absolutely okay if initially you feel lonely or scared, maybe fear of losing people, but this is all going to be a part of self-acceptance and growth. But always remember, you are in a journey of self-love and doing something for yourself initially, you will have a lot of negative questions and doubts and you feel if you are doing the right thing because you will never feel a part of the mainstream society's idea of everyone being loud and bright or that you may not meet expectations of being an extrovert. But that's okay because introverts can still be leaders, entrepreneurs and performers. They can still be successful. You just have to remember the road to self-journey or self-love. It's also very important to cut out those people who drain your energy or cannot vibe with you. You need to start creating space and try to learn to distinguish between who are the real ones, who will see you grow. Because in this world, most of them are here to have some fun and entertainment by looking at you suffering because you wanted to become a part of that pre-notion society where people expect you to be a certain way. Only then you will be accepted. But in the process of trying to fit in, you lose your self-worth and self-acceptance. And by the end of you are not satisfied or feel happy from inside. And that's the main reason of being depressed and anxious. But trust me on this, after accepting yourself as an introvert, you will feel at peace and more happy because you no longer have to pretend to be someone you're not just to be a part of the society or try to fit in with them. Let me share a few steps which will help you focus on your self-growth and self-acceptance as an introvert. Number one, observe yourself. There is no doubt you are the master of, of observing others and surroundings. But honestly, ask yourself, how many times have you observed yourself? You know, self-observation is the most powerful tool for self-study and self-knowledge. It gives you the answer to the questions like, what do I like? What do I don't like? Which people are good for me? Which people are bad for me? What makes me react or overthink? What triggers my anxiety? What makes me feel happy? Where am I at peace more? Etc, etc, etc. Until you observe yourself, you don't know the answer to these questions. And trust me, life can feel very hard. This reminds me of the second step. When I say acceptance, you don't accept people if they lie to you, right? So similarly, you cannot lie about yourself to yourself and then try to accept yourself. No, you cannot do that. Your brain and your mind are very sharp. It will catch your lie within a fraction of seconds. Why to lie for something that you need to be proud of? Just like when you ask yourself the same questions that what you like, who trains you, who nourishes you, real people, fake people, how you like spending your time, etc, etc. And lying on these basic questions about yourself, where is the acceptance then? Be loyal to who you are. Respect yourself more. Respect how you want to spend your time. 
and how you want to live your life. It is your life. You need to take the command and let everyone know about who you really are. Stop caring to socialize, winning approvals and acting like extroverts. Once you are loyal to emotions, feelings, personality traits and accept those and work with the strength, you are going to be the magnetic person in the room. People will be mesmerized by your vibe. Because finally, you stopped giving out the energy to something so fragile. Because you stopped acting who you're not. Because you accepted who you are. Third and the last step is to journal. When we try to accept ourselves and not fall into the words people say to us, we have a lot of confusions, questions, doubts. Everything's creating a chaos in your head. So it is important to write everything we have in our mind in a journal. A journal which is just yours. Nobody has to see that or read that. But it is just for you to keep a positive mindset. And whenever something is bothering you or you have too many emotions flowing in you, you will have something to vent your emotions out. And keeping a writing account or a written account of your thoughts, emotions, behaviors and patterns will paint a very clear picture of who you truly are. And when you have it all written down like that in a diary, it becomes very easy to accept yourself. Let's move on to our next segment or the chapter for today's episode, the misconceptions or the myths about introverts. Like everything else people like to assume about the introverted personality type, they tend to make their own perception about the person who is an introvert. So most introverted people often report that others do not seem to understand them. Let me point out the top four myths that I've heard about being an introvert, which are not just myths or misconceptions, but extremely harmful for the ones who go through this every day. I've been through this. I have heard all of this. So let me share the top four that I have been through. Number one, quiet, not shy. All right. Introverts do not speak. If they're antisocial and shy, afraid of things, it is simply not true. Let's not judge an introvert easily because this is one personality which comes in as a surprise. You won't even know and they'll do something extremely extraordinary. They might not be outgoing or as talkative as their extroverted counterparts, but assuming that they're shy is absolutely not true. They are by nature the deep thinker or silent observers. The first thing I'd like you to understand is that being quiet and being shy are two different things. They might be quiet because they prefer deep and meaningful conversations, which creates a genuine connection with others over the superficial and small talks. What I mean to say is introverts prefer to have a one-on-one conversation with you rather than attending a loud or crowded social event. But this does not mean that they are antisocial or shy. They seek intimate and authentic or genuine connection. Contrary to popular belief, introverts can be just as social and outgoing as extroverts. Do not know how to relax and have fun. This is my point number two. How many of you think this is actually true? Let me burst this myth also. They know how to have fun and relax. It might not be the same as extroverts and it has a scientific reason. We know our brain releases something which is known as dopamine, which is also known as a feel-good hormone. It is basically a chemical messenger or a neurotransmitter which helps nerve cells send messages to each other. So, as an introvert, they are not a thrill or adventurous or adrenaline junkies, but whenever they are in the middle of the crowd or noise, they shut down. Their brain is too sensitive to neurotransmitters or dopamine. So, their meaning of for relaxation and fun are very different from what their society has said. They will anytime prefer to go for a walk into nature, a night in on the Friday nights with their favorite TV show or reading a book, basically anything which recharges them. Number third, introverts have no emotions or they are emotionless. Introverts are humans too, right? With the same senses like an extrovert. Of course, they are not robots. But assuming by their personality that they don't have emotions is completely untrue. They may not dramatically display their emotions for the world to see, but they have emotions and feelings like everybody else. They tend to internalize their feelings and deal with them when they are on their own. They are the best for such circumstances where you want someone who has control over their emotions and stays cool in tense situations. 
no one can do that better than introverts because they stay calm and make the right decision and will take the correct action by providing emotional support to others if need be last but not the least the fourth myth introverts are not ambitious when we say ambitious we presume that the person who is outgoing confident speaks in public basically has an extroverted personality can only be driven by ambition or have a successful career but as per the research shows an average the successful people were introverts introverts may not be outgoing or socially active or confident that does not mean they are not confident in other aspects of life actually the truth is they are most driven by success because they put their entire focus on what they decide to achieve and until then they'll not rest it is very simple extroverts have their attention to various things going around them but for introverts they do not care what comes in between their journey to success they may have different ways of handling or going around with it they prefer to work independently in quiet environments and may prefer to tackle challenges on their own and before seeking help all in all being an introvert definitely doesn't hold them back from achieving their goals by playing to their strengths and finding their ways to recharge their energy and connect with the world they can pursue their ambition in a way that feels authentic and fulfilling this brings me to the last segment or the chapter of this episode As an introvert, we also seek validation from the social world. You might be confident in some aspects of your life, but when it comes to public speaking or interacting with people, you lose all your confidence and self-belief. There are no hard and fast rules to be socially confident. But what I'm trying to say here is, you need to give yourself the chance of getting out of your comfort zone and try interacting socially. Let me share some top 3 things which I tried while I was focusing focusing on self-growth. Start slow. step out of your comfort zone socializing can be a fun and fulfilling experience when you have the right skills to approach take small steps you are going to have to jump uncontrollably take tiny steps do not go directly to public speaking start with interacting in small groups maybe in your workplace or college wherever you feel can help you grow you might have heard about one step at a time follow that but at the same time do not restrict yourself just by doing this Every day you increase your steps don't just keep on interacting with the same group a few people from that group make sure you are indulging in the social activities and making your surroundings even bigger initially you will feel well anxious nervous want to just go back home and probably think that is a bad idea but trust me it is the way towards self growth You cannot sit at home wondering I want to be socially interactive and confident but actually you're not even putting that effort in real. Then those dreams are always going to be dreams. If you want you need to get up from that couch, leave that book behind and put on a pretty outfit, go out, meet people and start socializing. You have to do it for yourself. As I said, take one step at a time but don't hide. With this, let me take you to the next point. interacting or socializing is obviously going to be a challenge for you but be ready to have some small talks do not put that invisible wall around you start breaking that let people know about you tell your story talk about your vision of life speak your perspective on a particular social topic sharing your experiences and thoughts is a great way to build rapport and connection with others engage yourself into a healthy discussion and more importantly give them the chance to know more about you people will appreciate your openness and honesty and they'll also get a sense of who you are and what you're like if you start hiding in that cocoon and not coming out you're going to probably stay in that cocoon forever stuck there are always open ended questions where it is not a yes or no answer probably ask that What do you like to do in your free time? What was your favorite part of the day so far? How did you get involved in? What inspired you to? Can you tell me a little about your background in? What motivated you to pursue, etc., etc. There are thousands of such open-ended questions which are the go-to for you to build social confidence. You don't have to buy hard them. You just have to try them. You fail once, maybe twice, maybe thrice. but eventually you will thrive and enjoy the process 
because you will be doing something for yourself you will be the one having the confidence to build a life for yourself let me tell you one thing honestly not everybody can have what you are capable of not everyone has the passion that you have to build a life that you always dreamt grab the opportunity don't hide yourself come out and see the world is beautiful my third point is explore your strengths and embrace your uniqueness everyone has strengths and weaknesses right so the first thing you need to do is understand your strength and embrace the uniqueness you have being yourself is the only way you can build genuine connection you don't have to pretend to be liked by everyone don't bother what people will think instead focus and embrace your unique qualities your personality let everyone know who you really are let your quirks and interests see the light of the world don't hide yourself just because you're afraid of what people will think of you everyone has a weakness and strength just like you the first step would be to accept your weakness and embrace and acknowledge your strength understanding your value and knowing your worth would be your second step until you realize your worth and value till then you will not be able to convince others that you have what it takes the third step for you is to stop comparing you need to focus on what you are good at you don't have to follow what others do now once you know your strength and your personality you should be focusing on what is good for you your growth your confidence embrace the changes that you are experiencing in your growth focus on evolving as a person never ever self doubt yourself you will lose the battle engaging in social situations is not just overwhelming but also a real task but trust me not only will this help you to feel happier engaging with your existing friends and family but it will also help you to build successful personal and professional relationships in the future remember that building your social skill will take time so don't feel discouraged just because you feel uncomfortable or nauseous don't stop engaging in social experience if you want to do something for yourself do it don't think about society judging you you are the mentor of your life grab each and every opportunity that knocks on your door don't hide from them because once you start hiding the opportunities stop coming we only get one life live the way you want not how society wants with this i come to the end of this episode i'm extremely happy because the response i've received from you guys it's overwhelming really thank you so much I am really grateful for your love and your time. Follow the Instagram at Limitless Horizons Podcast for latest updates and quotes on self growth and self development. See you next Monday. Till then, keep smiling, love yourself, and be obsessed with yourself because your growth is around your self love.